Hi folks, welcome to Astronomy Live. As many of you already know, last week SpaceX launched 60 satellites for its Starlink constellation. This is a new constellation of satellites in low Earth orbit that will provide internet to customers around the world with low latency and high bandwidth. Some are concerned that this will dramatically alter our view of the night sky, and that it may even pose a problem for deep space and long exposure astrophotography. Others are downplaying those concerns, saying that these satellites will not have much visible impact on the night sky. So who's really correct in this situation? Well, it really depends on where you're located on Earth and what time of year it is. So we're going to take a look now at what impact this constellation would have when fully deployed. At the time that I'm recording this, the Wikipedia page for the Starlink constellation shows a table with 12,000 satellites spread out over two different orbital altitudes, 550 kilometers and 340 kilometers. For the purposes of this video, we will go with those numbers and I will create a simulated set of 12,000 Starlink satellites spread out evenly over those two altitudes at an inclination of 53 degrees across 83 different orbital planes evenly spaced apart. Videos on other channels have already taken a look at what that looks like from space with the Earth surrounded by a network of 12,000 satellites. But for the average person, I think it's more interesting to look at what the night sky will look like from various locations on Earth at various times of year. Both the location and the time of year will have an important impact on just how many satellites will be seen in the sky. Additionally, these satellites are fairly faint, as you can see, for the most part. However, occasionally, they will experience flares and brightness depending on the sun angle and how the sun is reflecting off the satellite. The brighter satellites in the constellation, like the brightest one you see here being tracked by my telescope last night, are indeed bright enough to be seen by naked eye, but even the dimmer satellites will show up in long exposure photographs such as star trail photos as well as deep space photos taken through telescopes. The visibility of these satellites is dictated entirely by whether or not they are reflecting the sun. When they're in Earth's shadow, they're not reflecting the sun, and so we can't see them in the sky. So during the summer months, you will have the most amount of time during the night to see these satellites, and during the winter months, you'll have the least amount of time during the night to see them. That might sound counterintuitive based on the fact that the winter months have longer nights, but in fact, the period of time where the satellites are visible is dictated by whether or not they have line of sight to the sun. And during the winter months, the sun is further below the horizon, and therefore the satellites have less line of sight to the sun throughout most of the night. The opposite is true during summer, which is why, in some locations, these satellites will actually be visible throughout the night during the summer months. First up, here's what the sky will look like during the summer from my location in Florida once all 12,000 satellites are deployed. Each green dot represents a Starlink satellite, and each red dot represents a satellite bright enough to be seen by the naked eye, which is already in orbit, and does not include the 60 Starlink satellites already launched by SpaceX. As you can probably already tell, the satellites are not visible throughout the night, as seen from Florida, except in the very far northern part of the sky, close to the horizon, where they won't really be visible. The higher they are in the sky, the brighter they will be. Nevertheless, in the time shortly after sunset and the time shortly before sunrise, you will see these satellites in the sky at much higher numbers than the satellites already in orbit right now that are bright enough to be seen by naked eye, represented by the red dots. Here it is again one more time, very quickly. And also note that I keep a tally of the red and green dots in the top left corner of the video. You can see the dramatic difference between the number of satellites that are currently visible versus the number of satellites that will be visible once Starlink is fully deployed. This is a view from New York during the summer, and you can see the satellites throughout the night here in the northern portion of the sky. Also note that the time and date at the top left corner are in universal time. Here is London during the summer, and the situation is even worse. 
The satellites are visible throughout the middle of the sky throughout the night. Transits are occurring from west to east over the zenith. Although the satellites look like they're moving east to west, this is just a phasing effect from how the video is rendered. Now during the winter months, the situation improves dramatically, even in London. The satellites quickly go into Earth's shadow and the night sky is clear. So while it could be said that there is a significant impact of this constellation on how many satellites will be visible, especially in long exposure photographs, it is constrained to certain times of the year and certain locations on Earth. Now here is New York during the winter months, and once again, although the satellites are quite numerous shortly after sunset, they quickly recede and the night sky becomes clear pretty early into the evening. I hope it's understood that the purpose of this video is neither to downplay and minimize these effects or say that it will have no impact at all, nor is it to claim that terrestrial astrophotography as we know it is coming to an end. Neither of the extremes are true. There are going to be impacts here. Some locations will experience it more than others, and some of us will just have to adapt. That might mean timing your exposures to try to avoid these impacts, and it might mean altering how you stack your images in order to average out the effects of these satellite trails on your photos. I hope you found this video to be informative and helpful, and if you did, please like and subscribe for more. Clear skies, folks.